Oh, now, nah. if that don't get it. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I don't think you have the slightest idea why I'm here. Well, I've been in your exact predicament. But you know what I done? I sprinkled him with Egyptian night. And when he come to, we was living on 110th overlooking the park. <laughs> of course, I had to pay the rent. Hi, sincere. Please put the stuff back. I'm afraid it's too, um, too potent for me. Well, you ought to try some. It never fails. I remember 
putting any gag in the letter? Oh, I'm sorry, dear old <laughs> You are. <laughs> You're an adorable idiot. Listen, darling. Getting married wouldn't make either one of us happy. Why not? Why not? Because it just wouldn't work. You've been saying that for the last six years, and I've never believed you. The whole thing is so typically you. There's a war on your board and what to do. So in your typical Roisian manner, you travel 10,000 miles. Well, All right, 12. You come crashing in here and you upset my peace of mind just because you want emotion roots. And bingo, I'm it. You know, you wanted to be a shining light in the medical profession once. You studied for 12 long years to get there, and then you threw it away. Just as you throw me overboard when some new idea struck your fancy. You're wrong, Jerry. Thank you. I'm sick of my very, very bugs, and you can... I can what? Well, you can... Listen, there, there must be dozens of men that would be crazy to marry you. I'm not quite sure just what that means. Oh, well... What? Well, why don't you go back home to the Central Clinic? You want to do something? Plenty work there, I understand. It's deeper than that, Jack. I want to belong somewhere. I want somebody of my own. Somebody who'll be glad to see my silly face coming through a door just because it's my silly face. You're the only one I ever felt that way about. I, uh, saw Michael. Last month, Manila. Station there. You see what I do? It doesn't matter anymore. Really, it doesn't. Dead three years, you know. Not talk about him, let's talk about us. We can't, Royce. He's right here with us. That's why you've come to me, Royce, because I'm his friend. I'm just one step nearer the thing you really want. Michael. That isn't true. It was always Michael. It's why you studied medicine, so you could be near him. Why you threw away your career, because he married someone else. You're too intelligent to start playing games, you know. stinks so. Oh, that must be some of Hyacinth's husband catcher. Huh? Don't you like it? I think it's horrible. Gosh, it seems to work. Hi, Jan, take the Royce as my lawfully wedded spouse. Hi, Jan, take the Royce my lawfully wedded spouse. Cleaving unto thee and forsaking all others. Leaving under the end, forsaking all of it. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poorer. For richer, for poorer. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. The ring, please. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. I pronounce thee man and wife. <laughs>
This is different. They've been mutilated. hundred miles southeast by east. The Japs have already been here. We'll probably meet them all the way. You ready? I'm ready. I'm not hungry. Funny how unhungry you get. I don't feel like eating. You don't? Hello, funny Faye. Did I ever tell you how nice you are, right? I mean, how really nice? Every day. Twice on Sunday. That's what you used to do to Michael in his headache. Remember? No, I don't. Jan, dear, please don't let's torture ourselves. All right, I'm sorry. Won't happen again, I promise you. Darling. Go ahead, Doc. 
Well, I'm a dog-eared doodlebug, a lady doctor. This is the most fortunate meeting, lady. I've been having terrible pains lately. Not as terrible as the one you give my neck. Go make camp. All right, all right. Come on, you lugs. Get there. Come on. What's on the menu tonight? Well, kidney beans and pink beans. Here's a can of Boston Bake. Why not mix them all together? Cook up something exciting. Yeah, like lobster a la Newberg. <laughs> <laughs> uh. One, six, three, four. This is Sergeant Mahoney from Bantac. One, six, three, four. Sergeant Mahoney calling. One, six, three, four. This is Sergeant Mahoney. Uh, reporting location. One, six, three, four. Captain, we're about 300 miles north of Bataan. It'll take us at least a month to get to Manila Bay. Yes, Captain. South by East, 60 miles. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Captain says, look out for zoot suits. Come on, what did he say? He said, South by East, 60 miles, then we come to a river. I know the place. That's north of West Shore. Anything else? Yeah, he says, step on it. There might not be any Manila when we get there. Fresh dressing. I brought this along. You did. You're terrific. Well, first I'll look after some of the others need attention more than I do. Thanks. Great guy. A great gal. You know, you remind me so much of a little girl in Manila. Oh, <laughs> here it comes. You know, I can tell this better myself. First thing he'll tell you, he thinks he don't deserve it. Well, I don't either. The only reason she goes for him is because she saw me first. Play down. I dream of Jeannie with a light brown hair. Oh. Ought to see how yellow her hair is. How blue her eyes. You know, the goofy part of the whole thing is, we were raised in the same county in Pennsylvania about 30 miles apart, and I never even laid eyes on her until we traveled halfway around the world. <laughs> Where did you meet her? In Manila. In them days, we were flying a plane there until Junior volunteered to be a hero, and we got shot down in a bush last week. There we are. Me. The all-American tech. Solid concrete from the neck. Both ways. Now, I always used to dream about a girl like Hey Dutch. That's what everybody calls her. Right. How are you? I don't know. What other thing? Speedo bites, I guess. Here, give me a hand, somebody. Right. Get him up. Anybody's got any coin on it? Valeria. Yeah. I've been in the army 15 years. So my name's on a bug instead of a bullet. 
We'll pitch camp here tonight. You'll be okay in a couple of days. No. You keep traveling. I'll catch up with you. Break up a litter. We'll take him with us. No. Don't stop for me. I'll be all right. We've thrown them off our trail. You can't carry me and make time. Keep pushing ahead. That's an order. I'm in command. I'll take it easy, sir. We'll make camp here tonight. Sure, you wake up in the morning feeling like a tiger. That is, if this guy don't keep you awake all night talking about this game. gun. The lieutenant decided to stay a while. Hiya, buddy. What's cooking? Where's the Dan? The Dan was evacuated 10 days ago. We're just picking up the leftovers. This is the last boat before the Japs get here. Well, the leftovers? That's it. Come on, leftovers. Southern exposure, or just a room. <laughs> Smells wonderful in here, don't it? Reminds me of a, the Ritz on Saturday night. Well, I'll tell you, Doc, they'll take care of you in there. And we'll go in and report to headquarters. Well, you better go with me. No, no, I'm all right. I'll go to headquarters with the general. Reporting, sir. Mason, sir. <laughs> well, so you got All through, right. eh? <laughs> That's great. Hello. I'm so it's glad Captain to see you. Uh, hey, Captain Moore, it's Dr. Stockton. We met the doctor and his wife in the jungle up north. Mrs. Stockton's also a doctor. My wife's a very fine surgeon, Captain. Well, that's fine. We could use a few more surgeons around here. Sorry. Oh, Nick, you? Well, <laughs> oh, you should have seen it. Mrs. Stockman took a bullet out of there. It was that big, the biggest bullet I've ever seen of her. <laughs> I'm sorry, men. I won't be able to put you in the plane. There isn't one left. You'll have to do your shooting from the ground. Are you kidding? More walking? Oh, my dogs. <laughs> ah, you live through it. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> Well, Glad to see you, Doctor. Show you know, the doctor around. Well, she took a pen knife. Cut it out of it. No idea what a luxury this is. Soap and a towel. We had showers in the barracks on the middle side. Do you suppose there are no water in the number four pipe was shelled two months ago? Never mind. I detest showers anyway. They're starting up again. You'll get used to it. It's amazing what we get used to. All the snarls up. Everything's fine. You in there, Doc? Yes, Pinky, come in. Your husband's reporting surgery. He'll be down in a minute. How are you? I'm fine. You look good. You do, too. Pinky. Dutch. I might have known you were hey, Dutch. But her eyes are not blue, they're green. Uh-oh. 
That calls for me. Oh, Peggy. But no plane this time. You don't have to worry. I'll be seeing you. Take care of each other. Oh, Pinky! Pinky! Nice door, soldier. Your ears are dirty. Why, God? Let me take a look at you. You'll do. Thanks. You haven't got a lipstick, have you? Sorry, I left it in my other pants. You seen Jan? You could have knocked me over with a 12-inch gun when he walked into surgery. So you married him. I'm glad for both of you. Thank you, Mike. Why did you do it, Mike? Why did you walk out on me? Don't, don't answer. I'm sorry I asked. That was a long time ago, Royce. Get yourself all dolled up, Tilly Winks. I'm taking you and Dan to the Waldorf for supper. They've given us a free entry. Afraid you cut yourself. Quit walking. Why, this is nice. Right out in the open, air cool. You'll be asking for more money next. Genius at work. another doctor at the dressing station up above. May I go? I'll need you down here, Rose. Well, let me go. I'll get the hang of it. You'll be careful, won't you, darling? Yes. Wind up again, put out class. Yes, darling. Is it dangerous up there? It isn't exactly a picnic. How are we doing? Fine. I had trouble finding gloves small enough, Doctor. There you are. Yeah. I wish they'd send me up there. Wouldn't you be afraid? Of course I would only. If I were out there, I'd be near a pinky. Funny. When he was a gunner on a plane, I, I used to think he'd be safer on the ground. Now I wish he were back in the air again. I'm worried sick. So's he. If you were up there, you'd be worried for fear something were happening to you. Yeah. I think he would worry. We're engaged to be married. Did he tell you? Not over a hundred times. I'm so goofy about him. You're no worse than he is about you. Hey, Dutch. You wanted one. You ready, Doctor? I'm ready.
going with it. studied with Hertzberg, right? What would you do? Trepanation and probe the fragments. Where would you affect that? The basal junction. Go ahead. You do it. All right. always like this? Sometimes it's worse. Oh, you're doing fine, right? to sleep. Well, doctor, have you seen my, have you seen Dr. Royce? No, I haven't. Do you suppose we'll be able to hold out here? A day? A week? I don't know. Kind of dumb, weren't we? Just sitting around letting a thing like this happen? Yeah. In a democracy, it takes longer for people to wake up. They won't face things until they actually happen. Think what it'd be like living in a world without any freedom. Doing without all the things you've always taken for granted. Never being able to express an opinion. We couldn't stand it. Mm -hmm. That's why we're hanging on. Every man on the rock knows what he's fighting for. Yeah. What do you think about Royce and me? It's great. Should have done it years ago. Only she was in love with you then. And she still is. I don't believe that. 
In fact, I know she isn't. I... I found it out a few minutes ago. Well, you're both a couple of idiots. You can't ignore a situation into non-existence. There isn't any situation. Not anymore. You must be half ostrich. Why don't you come up for air? You still love her? I used to. I remember one evening we spent in the park planning what we'd do when I got the Hertzberg appointment. I had 15 bucks. We were going to be married and live on my salary. She said she didn't mind our being poor. Everything was swell. And the very next day she went out and rented the most expensive offices in town for me. She installed equipment a hospital might have been just because she had the money to buy anything she wanted. And you made a fool of yourself. Rushed out and married a woman you didn't give two snaps about. You know, Mike, you threw away four lives that night. Yours, hers, mine, and your wife. Did you make Penny happy? No, I'm afraid not. Well, that leaves us just where we were six years ago. Two men in love with the same woman. Couldn't your time we settled that situation, hmm? It's all settled. Is it? Yes, it's settled. Now, you'd better get some stuff. skips a beat every time you look around and he isn't there. I think I know what you mean. Every time I hear a siren, I think it's an ambulance. Sometimes I think I'm going crazy. You mustn't worry. But when you're that way about a guy... I felt about someone like that once. That wasn't love. There was no security in it. No peace. It hurt too much. I don't care. I don't care how much it hurts. I know what I want. I want to marry Pinky and settle down and raise a family. Pinky's crazy about kids. Pinky's a fine boy. All my life I've had five sisters. Pretty ones. The boys were crazy about them. <laughs> I had to wear braces on my teeth. <laughs> they did all right by you. Pinky wants to wait until we get home to get married, but I'm afraid if he sees my sisters... He won't even look at them. You'd better get some rest. Why don't you sleep yourself? I just got to take a look topside. I'll see you later. Here's your rations. Don't overeat. Uh, biscuit. <laughs> they ought to give you something to dunk them in. Yeah, like carbolic acid, for instance. <laughs> Only, you know this is mule meat? Yeah. You know, I've been beating the stuffings out of them things for 20 years. They're sure getting even with me now. <laughs> what gives? Rattan pheasants, you know. Ah, huh. camouflage japs. <laughs> All right, kid, come on. Hmm. Wake up. What did you wake me up for? Boy, I was... I was dreaming about a great, big, juicy hamburger. With onions. The relief is coming on. Good. Got a few more hours to live. We don't die from starvation. 
I don't want to die that way, but for malaria. I want to die fighting. Yeah, if we only had something to shoot. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you something to shoot. Sure. you two quit romancing. Get married and settle down on a nice little farm and raise a lot of cows and chickens. And mules? You didn't have to say that. I'll be seeing you. other at any rate. Love is blind, you know. I've got to report to headquarters. Soak up all the sun you can. You won't get any when they start their daylight raids. I'll go with you. ran over your legs. Oh. Sleeping out isn't what it's cracked up to be. Good morning. Good morning. Up to sea days. Uh, hiya. Oh, hello. 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 Come on, honey. Let's try and find a tin cup of water and take a bath. Yeah, she looks like... Don't you say it. I've got a report to, before they throw me in a guardhouse. If there is a guardhouse, get us all in, will you? All right. See you later, dear. How's about a hot tub bath full of nice, soapy water? This bubble. Bubbles. 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 <laughs> the Japanese have driven with incredible speed through Burma, and so ends another definite stage of the war. With all the rice, oil, and tin of Burma in Japanese hands. Sugar rationing goes into effect throughout the United States next week. Now, every man, woman, and child in the United States will have to carry ration cards. It is rumored that other commodities, such as rubber and coffee, may soon suffer the same fate as sugar. Indeed, it is not too much to expect that the people of this country will be called upon to give up eating meat one day a week. <laughs> Why, Junior? What could happen sacrifices. to you? This program comes to you from San Francisco, sponsored by the makers of Crispy Kernels. With Crispy Kernels, you start the day off right. They're just plain good. They give you pep. Listen to them pop. A oh, double oh, no, brother. We tried them, and we found out they ain't good for the fight. Oh, but they are. I had them this morning with uh, sugar, cream, and strawberry. Yeah, they're very good like that, but I went for the baked apple. Ah, oh, shut up, you guys! Far-reaching effects. The nation is eagerly awaiting the outcome as a determinant of future policy. The good news coming from the nation last week concerns production. 
April aircraft production was 75% greater than the month preceding Pearl Harbor. It is expected that the goal set for the year of 60,000 airplanes will be reached. Have us in this head busy. Yeah, send us three, send us two, send us one! Hey, 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 take it easy. 29 corporations omitted their common You want your congressman to hear you? You make him unhappy too. The news comes impartially. Well, we may as well face the situation, gentlemen. Ordnance? Ammunition running very low, sir. Medical? We're low on everything, sir. Even anesthetics. Watermaster? Prepare for the new week, sir. Commissary? We're living on emergency rations now, sir. Engineering? Got a little water left, sir. Hardly cut to drink. Well, that's the story, boys. Now, what'll it be? Fight or quit? Serious, I think it's standing by me, boys. I knew I could rely upon you. Sure. Do you do it? You see what I see? Yeah, Jeff. Here come the Jeff's at Something to shoot at. Come on, you dirty sons of geeks! Station number six. We need supplies. Mostly sold from the Alamine. Also stretcher bearers. All right, wait a minute. All right, I can't help that. This is emergency. <laughs> GHQ to all positions, cease firing. I repeat, GHQ to all positions, cease firing. For the eternal God, for inasmuch as Yenja Van Doren and Pinkham Mason have entered into the holy bonds of wedlock and witnessed the same before God and this company, and have therefore declared, given and pledged their faith each to each other. 
and declared the same by joining their right hands. I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put us up. O eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, giver of spiritual grace and life everlasting, send thy blessing on these thy servants, this man and this woman, that they may remain in perfect love and peace together. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Why is it all leaving? I'm all right. I'll say you are, sweetheart. I used to live up there before they drove us underground. Would you like to see the place? If it's all right for her, safe enough. Come on, here's the shortcut. Well, this is it. That was the kitchen. There's the dining room. And this was the fireplace in the living room. There was a lot they didn't teach us in anatomy. Maybe we weren't ready for it then. I mean like Kay Dutch. And the way she loved Pinky. Love? You mean the way she loves Pinky, don't you? You're tired, Grace. Try not to think about it. That's right. Try not to think about it. Business as usual. When are you two fools going to come to your senses? Jan, dear, please. I'm beginning to feel like a ghost myself. Here we are in a living room which doesn't exist, talking about a girl who's... and something that happened a long time ago. And instead of being thankful that deep down inside there's something solid like this rock we're standing on, you're still running away, burying yourselves underground. Do you know that the first basic fundamental truth that enlightened human beings was received on a rock like this, Mount Sinai? And to prove that truth, it was spread it to the furthest corners of the earth? You know what happened at Gethsemane? And there's a rock, too. And now all of us here, we're standing for truth. It's broader sense. There isn't time for anything else. Still the analyst, eh, Jan? Analyzing us right through the gates of eternity. That's what we're facing, you know, any moment now. And why do you think I feel we're so important? Because we're dying for something we believe in. Call it democracy. Well, that's what it is. The individual's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That means yours. And yours. And mine. Well... You understand what I'm trying to tell you? All right, all right, never mind. I'm getting off the soap park right now. So on. Uh... Jen! I'll... I'll talk to him tomorrow, Bryce. Jen, please wait for me! Jen! Jen! 
I didn't mean to upset you, darling. I wasn't upset. I, I just wanted to be with you. Would you mind kissing me? I'd love it. Honey, you look after Michael, won't you? What do you mean, look after Michael? He doesn't need looking after. Oh, yes, he does. Very much. And you'll stop being afraid. You'll be honest with yourself. I am honest. Honey, you're so doggone sweet. Here's that kiss I promised you. You will be careful, won't you? I'll be careful. I'll be 
South Dock. It's medical GHQ. Here's your pasture list. Nurse Albright, Briggs, Buffington, Carter, Chandler, Donovan. Why aren't you ready to go? Didn't you get your orders? I'm not going. I say, you can't make me leave. I can make you leave. I'm not thinking of you now, Grace. Nor of me. What about Chad? What would he want? He just like you. He want me to be safe. Then we'll see that you are safe. Get ready. This is it. Don't be afraid now. Anything as strong as this will go right on. Suppose you were killed. Even if I were. That's not the end of everything. You think the crumbling of those walls means the corregidor is done for? I know better than that. They're just a symbol of what we're fighting for. We'll come back. We'll build up everything that's been destroyed. Someday, I'll come back to you. Wherever you are. Do you believe that? I believe it. I do, my I believe. I'll take care of it. So long, Mike. All of you. If you see that buddy of mine, tell him I'll send him a mule from Australia.
Doctor, you're out of stuff in the whole night. More teeth, taking solution, gauze, bandages, sheets. In other words, we're out of everything. That's it. Do the best you can. Major operation waiting for you, Doctor. <laughs> Broadcast to Manila to arrange a meeting with the Japs. Everyone here is bawling like a baby. We've got about 55 minutes before surrender. I'm sick of my stomach. Men of the blood red rock, Corregidor, the rock, the living rock for which you died, freedom, still stands enthroned above the war. No treacherous foe can scale that mountainside. Your dying hands rebuilt above the world, a fortress for the unconquerable mind, a mountain with a sky of stars unfurled above it and a hope for all mankind. Men of the rock, far over sea and land, your thunder-cloven crests once more grow bright. America, the torch in her right hand, re-crowned with fire, is moving through the night. America, by land and sea and air, moves to her dead. Let all her foes beware. Hey, 